on the YouTube page, we got, and the, the site, we have the race breakdown that I spoke about with Carl Lewis go up right now. So people can go check that out. It is about Elaine Thompson Hurrah and Shelly Ann Frazier Price. We look at one of their pre-Olympic races and Carl dives into just why Elaine Thompson Hurrah was so successful in 2021, points out some of the differences between her and Shelly Ann Frazier Price. It was very fun to go shoot those. We have five in total. This is number one. And then after that, we'll continue the race breakdown series, although not with Carl Lewis, unless he just wants to keep having us gun down to Houston every couple months and talk sprints with him, which there's worse things you could do, yeah. to be honest. I had a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, so we'll see. Maybe we'll do a season two with Carl after the first five. Yeah, we'll find more sprinters. Um, find more sprinters. That's good. Yeah, I encourage people to check it out. This Week in Track is also up as well, where I give a rundown of 22 things to watch for in 2022. Um, That is up on the site. And then today, Gordon is releasing the first edition of the NCAA ranking show. And look at this. Look at that headline, folks. A Georgia football and track double. Gordon asking the questions that very few people are asking, but he's asking them. No one saw Georgia beating that. I mean, people (laughs) thought Georgia was going to beat Alabama, but I think Georgia's, no one's really talking about the Georgia track team right now, but they have Uh a very good runner, Matthew Bowling, and Mm -hmm. the best multi-event group on the men's side. They got four guys who can all score in the heptathlon indoors. So that's the recipe to potentially win. And I break down also the women's field. Uh, it's going to be a weekly show. We had the NCAA cross-country show. We've mm-hmm. rebranded it to now the NCAA track and field show. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to watch this as soon as we finish the pod. And in the back half of the pod, we're, I'm going to ask you about the rankings. Not the stuff you talked about in the show because I haven't seen it yet, but I have looked at all your rankings. So I want to get your opinion on just what makes the Georgia men so strong and the Florida women as well and then i'm putting up the pro actually i'm not calling it the pro what are we ta- calling it international uh what is it called because it's not pro because i'm including college and in the world individual rankings world individual rankings i am including college kids there's not many on there but if you're fast enough i'm putting you on there because i'm trying to tell you who the 10 best 60 meter runners are in the world and if you happen to be in the ncaa i'm putting you on the rankings so there's going to be that show going up on thursday tomorrow but the rankings are already up i also might on the side cr- not create a new show but also add rankings to our website u.s rankings okay the u.s only rankings. so we're gonna have the nca rankings the world rankings and u.s rankings so Jeez. all the rankings you can ask for and then i'll have a ranking of the rankings and then i'll have yeah. a ranking of the ranking of the rankings so it'll just be forever <laughs> well, be like in the matrix well it's great because ncaa includes people in the NCAA system from all over the world. The world rankings are just going to include everybody from all throughout the world. And the U.S. rankings are going to include just people from the United States. And those people could be in college or they may not be. So everything is crossing over on itself, creating the beautiful tapestry that is the sport of track and field that we know and love. Exactly. Terrific. Terrific. Uh, We're also going to talk about the Boston Marathon women's field 